This is a big moment that marks a significant turning point in this response to the global pandemic. It's been a long nine months. This is sort of the first ray of hope that we've had. I've always been asked the question, will I get the vaccine? Absolutely, I will. I'll ask my, my, my family to get the vaccine too, and they want to get the vaccine. The vaccine is on the way. We've entered the final leg of this marathon, but I hope that you will join me in our efforts to finish strong. Delivering the dose as the COVID-19 vaccine is making its way to Missouri. For the next half hour here on our live broadcast tonight, we're going to bring you what we know so far about the COVID-19 vaccine and address some of your questions and concerns. Good evening tonight. I'm David Oliver and I'm Heather Lewis. Thank you for joining us. Brand new today, Missouri State Health Director Dr. Randall Williams said if the FDA approves Pfizer's vaccine tonight, vaccinations could start as soon as Wednesday. We're watching the news today with the same anticipation. We're incredibly appreciative. I was at the White House on Tuesday with the president, the vice president in Operation Warp Speed with uh, General Perna and with him yesterday. And his commitment is, is that within 24 hours, he will ship the vaccine and that within four days, we will be vaccinating people here in Missouri. We are ready to vaccinate people in Missouri on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. I've talked to the institutions. So if it could get approved today and ship tomorrow, we would do it on Wednesday and Thursday. But it, it, it's going to be, when, when you hear the news it's been approved, I think you can count on four days later, it will be uh, being vaccinated in Missouri. Of course, local health leaders held a news conference here in Springfield about the vaccine, giving us more details yesterday. Let's get right to what they had to say. Dr. Robin Trotman with Cox Health and Dr. Will Sistrunk with Mercy talked about vaccine studies. Dr. Trotman says he takes his role in this vaccine very seriously. I've looked at the safety of both vaccines. I've studied this since these were preclinical trials. Um, I love the idea of these vaccine platforms of mRNA. That's the platform for the vaccines that Cox and Mercy will be receiving. Um, this is about as exciting and safe of a platform to deliver a vaccine as I can think of. These are small little molecules that have the blueprint to make a little part of the virus. They're not very stable molecules and they fall apart in your body after a few days. They don't cause cancer and we think these are going to be extremely safe. We have experience with mRNA vaccines in the past. We've used these for cancer, we've used these for other infectious diseases and we have phase one data where we've looked at patients who received this vaccine four or five months ago. So we have a couple hundred days worth of safety data on some of those patients and we're not seeing signals of serious adverse events. The efficacy of these vaccines is very good. Uh, both Pfizer and Moderna have reported uh, over 94% efficacy rates, which is very, very good. And this is gonna be a very important tool for us to, to fight uh, COVID-19, this epidemic in the United States. I can tell you that I've had family members that have been part of the Moderna trial uh, and have uh, had minimal side effects uh, from, that, from the vaccine with a very good antibody response. I have confidence in the in the FDA and the CDC and Pfizer and Moderna to provide us with a safe and effective vaccine. This these studies are thoroughly being evaluated. So as we talk tonight about delivering the dose, we want to welcome into our broadcast Dr. Casey Morton. She's the president of the Greene County Medical Society and the pediatric medical director at Jordan Valley Healthcare. Dr. Morton, welcome. You just heard Dr. Trotman and Dr. Sistrunk talk about the efficacy of the vaccine. What have you seen in the studies? Yeah, um, I think they made some really good points. Um, the science and the technology is super exciting. Um, and knowing that the effic efficacy is, um, you know, up to 90, 90% is great. Um, I think that uh, those that already received the vaccines have seen that effectiveness. And what's interesting is that you can even see benefits starting from 14 days after that first dose, um, you know, 
giving the immune system that two weeks for the immune system to make a sufficient antibody response and give some protection after that vaccination. So, Dr. Morton, we, as you can imagine, have had a lot of viewers uh, pose questions to us to uh, to ask of uh, folks like yourself. You heard Dr. Trotman talk about this being an mRNA vaccine and what that means. Talk a bit a bit a bit more about that and how it's going to affect the patient. Yeah, so it's a little bit different than the normal vaccines. It's actually um, replicating that COVID molecule and going in and going into our body and basically um, mimicking the infection so that our bodies can fight that off faster. Now, another question that we received from a viewer, is there any indication how long this vaccine will be effective? How often we'll have to get it? Yeah, at this point, that's one of the things they don't know. Um, they do think that the vaccine will be a little bit stronger than our native infection would be or having the actual infection. Um, but we don't know exactly how long it will last. If it will be something seasonal like we see with the flu vaccine. That's something that will have to come as we study it further. Is it too early to ask you this question if this could be a vaccine like we have for measles or the mumps? It's a one time thing and you're done. Is it too early to know that probably? Yeah, for sure. It's too early at this point, um, especially knowing that we can get reinfected with COVID um, already. Um, you know, it just doesn't give us enough information until we see more data from the next year or two. Okay, Dr. Morton, stay put. We're going to bring you back in on the broadcast here. Of course, one big question about this COVID-19 vaccine is about side effects. Mercy Dr. Will Sistrunk explained some of the side effects expected. If you think about it, um, what a vaccine does is it really fools the body into thinking it has an infection. And so what does your body normally do with an infection? It causes fever. It, it, you see body aches from the inflammatory response. And, uh, and typically with vaccines at the site where you got the, the, the shot, you see, see, you see tenderness. And we see that really with a lot of our vaccines, if not all, if not many of them. Um, and so in the studies we, uh, that, that I've reviewed, as well as Dr. Trotman, really the side effects that, that they're seeing are, are, are body aches, uh, some pain at the injection site, which is a common finding, uh, some headache, uh, and some low-grade fevers or the majority of those. Uh, some people in, in the studies, the first vaccine, there were not as many side, as many of those um, side effects. In this, with the second shot, there were a few more, but they were not described as severe symptoms. They were described as mild or moderate symptoms by the study. And so I think that that's what we should expect uh, um, from this vaccine. The FDA is gonna have the same scrutiny for all of these. It's it is the amount of what's called pharmacovigilance going on for these vaccines, and Dr. Sistrong knows with this Pfizer vaccine, there's going to be an app. They're going to be actively looking for side effects. Typically, side effects with vaccines have to be reported by the doctor. So if you get a flu shot and you have a side effect, we have to physically report that. In this case, this is going to be going after those people, looking for symptoms and trying to run this down. So it's going to be a heightened uh, what's called pharmacovigilance going forward. Like it's, it's very exciting. It's gonna change the way we do vaccines. And we've received several questions about side effects as well. Dr. Morton, will any existing medications or specific conditions be affected? Um, I think just with the knowledge that we have right now is that somebody with high allergies to medications could potentially have a more adverse reaction to this, but we don't know that for sure. Um, so I think it's just something that we'll have to be cautious with. And those people that have significant allergies would have to let the person know before vaccines. And if they have an EpiPen or need to um, have treatment, they would have that with them at that time. I know one viewer asked us this on Facebook, Dr. Morton, uh, talking about a drug that this particular viewer took to treat cancer that was similar in, uh, and it had that mRNA technology. And her question was, will that affect how the vaccine might work in people like her who had that type of cancer treatment? Now, the thing about mRNA is it's very specific to COVID only. So that protein that's going to attach to um, in, in the body is only going to attach to the COVID virus vaccine and make it look like that and be effective for that. So it should not be affected by that. And at yesterday's news conference, Dr. Trotman and Springfield Green County Health Director Clay Goddard responded to questions about reactions to the vaccine that some people had in England. That one's a curiosity, the severe reactions in the UK. 
keep in mind a lot of these vaccine trials might have excluded people that reported having a severe reaction in the past. And so people with a history of severe allergic reactions may have been excluded. We don't know that this was truly anaphylaxis. We don't have those details yet. So from an immunologist standpoint, from a clinician standpoint, anaphylaxis is a very specific word. And I don't have those granular of details of what type of reaction that was. For instance, the type of reaction that could be managed with Benadryl versus an emergency room trip. But uh, it wasn't a major signal in the studies. It's not unheard of, it's fairly rare that you'll have reactions to any vaccine. And so we have protocols built into uh, our immunization processes where people don't leave immediately after they receive that vaccination. We're gonna monitor them and see if they do have a reaction. And so I'm sure that will be built into this uh, vaccination process as well. So when we talk about allergies, we of course know that there are a plethora of different allergies that affect different people. One viewer wants to know what concerns or dangers exist for people with severe food allergies. Have you heard of anything with that, Dr. Morton? At this point, the only two severe allergies we've had from Pfizer, we don't have all the details like Dr. Trotman had stated, but we do know that it's like, according to VAERS, is 1.3 per, um, well, per million people will have a reaction to the vaccine. Um, any vaccine, just like um, Clay Goddard had stated. Um, so, and most of these allergies are going to happen within that first two hours of actually getting the vaccine. And it seems that the likeliness of having it with the first one is lower than having it with the second dose. You know, over the last many months of this pandemic, we've all certainly uh, heard a lot of uh, discussion with regard to underlying health conditions. We've all kind of taken stock of our own health too, probably wondering how mm -hmm. if we get COVID, it might affect us. But in terms of the vaccine, will the vaccine be safe for patients who do have those underlying health conditions? Let's say like a COPD, maybe heart failure, heart issues, previous heart attack history, or even breathing issues. Well, I think that the technology for this vaccine is actually safer for that um, genre of patients. Um, I think that they will actually benefit more from getting this than not getting it. So I guess you'd probably tell those folks with those kinds of underlying conditions to obviously talk to their own physician, their primary care doctor, get some information, see what that doctor says is the most appropriate uh, course of action for that particular patient. Yeah, for sure. Okay, now we want to uh, hear again from State Health Director Dr. Randall Williams. He answered several questions for us today. One of them, can people still pass on the virus even if they've had the vaccination? Even if you've been vaccinated, there would be a, a window of time in which the virus would enter your nose and your body would amount uh, an immune uh, uh, response. And in that short window of time between getting in your nose and before your body could fight it off, it's theoretically possible that you could spread it. We think until June or July, when every Missourian will be able to have access to the uh, uh, vaccine who wants it in uh, the state, that we're gonna encourage everybody to wear masks, social distance, to uh, use hand sanitizer, and to be real conscious of how you congregate inside, especially. You know, I, I listened to Dr. Williams answer there, uh, Dr. Morton, and I think a lot of us are just going to come out of this and everybody's going to be like he was saying, even if you get the vaccine, we're still going to be masking for some time. Uh, we're going to be, you know, social distancing, washing our hands more. Don't you think we're also just going to come out of this and be more cognizant in general of the germs that are around us in everyday life? I mean, I think so. I think that the this isn't gonna go away for us completely. We have to still consider those mitigation things like washing our hands, cleaning off things, um, distancing ourselves, um, and then the mask until that we feel that we have enough immunity, herd immunity build up in the community that it's you know not as contagious or concerning. It's gonna be a while. And by a while, you don't mean just over the next several months. No, I mean, I anticipate for the next year at least to see how we get the vaccines. I mean, we're also concerned about vaccine hesitancy and people not getting it. You know, we need to make sure we're getting the vaccine to everybody so that we can get to that new normal. I, I don't want to throw you a curveball here, Dr. Morton, but have you seen <laughs> have you have you seen any kind of uh, polling yet? I guess polling maybe is not the right word, but an indication here in Missouri in terms of people's willingness to get the vaccine when they arrive. Not in Missouri specifically, but definitely watching um, in different listservs and different ways of, of, 
of the polling across the nation. And, you know, it's looking like anywhere between that 50 to 60 percent um, would be willing to or consider it. Um, nobody, you know, so we have to see what they actually decide to once they get all this information that we're, we're getting out there. Yeah, we're going to have to watch that for sure. And Dr. Williams, we should mention, also shared today where we'll be able to get the vaccines after the first phases uh, go out involving long-term care residents and also health care healthcare workers that have been out there on the front lines. Yeah, we also learned how the state will actually track the vaccines just to make sure people get their second dose. Uh, you'd be able to get it at Walgreens, CVS, uh, FQHCs, health departments. Uh, uh, once we get into uh, uh, phase three, which is three million people in April or June, we'll have gymnasium clinics, drive-in clinics. The vaccine is free. Uh, you can charge about a $23 administration fee if you're a doctor or a hospital, but uh, the vaccine is provided free. And so we will make arrangements that if you don't have insurance or Medicaid or Medicare, uh, nobody in Missouri will, will not get the vaccine because of the lack of, of funding. So every sh vaccine in Missouri is tracked by us and the federal government because we have to give another vaccine. It has to be the same type of vaccine, Pfizer, Pfizer, Moderna, Moderna. And starting in February, we think we'll have AstraZeneca and J&J. &J. We'll have four vaccines. So we have to keep up with who's getting what so we can remind them to get it and then we can make sure that none is, is being wasted are not used. Uh, Dr. Morton, I heard something uh, uh, coming from Dr. Williams there that, that made me wonder, you know, you being uh, the pediatric health director over at Jordan Valley obviously have a lot of experience uh, helping people here uh, without insurance or perhaps a, a little amount of insurance. He mentioned that mm -hmm. the vaccine is going to be free, but their doctors or providers could charge an administration fee to administer uh, the vaccine to you. Do you anticipate that being an issue uh, in terms of, you know, maybe health insurance companies that will, will pay for that or folks who maybe can't afford that? What, what do you see on that front? Yeah, I, I hope that we don't have to worry about that um, because I think that it's more important to be getting people vaccinated than it is to get, um, you know, paid for per se. Um, but I think that within Cox, Mercy, Jordan Valley, all around this area, I have no concerns that we'll get this out to the public as much as we can. Okay. Another big uh, question, certainly about the COVID-19 vaccine. How long will the immunity last? Mercy's Dr. Sistrunk shared that's still an unknown. I, mean, I think that Pfizer and the FDA don't know yet. The hope is that, that, that there'll be a long lasting immunity. We know we there are common coronaviruses that are not COVID-19 that we commonly see uh, uh, across the world. I mean, routinely, and and we get immune to those uh, over time. And so we're hoping that this vaccine will have a long-lasting effect, uh, but um, we just don't know. You know, that, and that's why we rely on the data. We we want to know the exact answer to that question, and so we're not going to know that until these trials continue and see how long that immunity lasts. So this really goes along with the question we received. Will the strands change like the yearly flu vaccine? Yeah, um, I think that we definitely see that it is changing already to a degree as in, you know, there's different forms of illness. There's different amounts. Some people are sicker than others. Um, and we don't know how this will continue to develop. So that's something that will have to continue to be studied. You know, we have a lot of things that we still have to worry about. And that's the, you know, knowing how long that duration of protection is and the effectiveness against transmission. And we still are studying it in pregnant women and we need more studies in pediatric patients as well. Another question that keeps uh, coming up in discussions here in our building and also with our viewers is if somebody has already had COVID-19, let's say, should they go ahead and get that vaccine as well? Um, I think that that will be the recommendation. It may put them a little lower down the line, um, but that we don't know the duration of a native infection and how long it lasts. Um, and we'll still probably be vaccinating those people. They just may not be first. And looking ahead, health leaders actually weighed in on the future. This is what they said about when we will see the impact of the vaccine and why it's important to not let our guard down yet. If you look at the efficacy of this vaccine and it prevents hospitalizations and severe disease, um, then we're going to see at any given time, there is a large proportion of our healthcare workers that are out sick. It's, I mean, we're general inhabitants of this 
community as well, so we get sick as well in the community. Um, so what I hope to see is that our workforce is stronger and more capable to handle more patients. Then we roll it out to long-term care facilities in that, still in that phase one. And hopefully what we see is we see those elderly people that are most at risk for bad outcomes, we see them protected. So now what we have is a healthcare system that stood up and we've protected the most vulnerable part of the population. And then we're talking spring, summer, probably before those people at really low risk um, are gonna be vaccinated. And there's gonna be certain populations that won't be able to be vaccinated. And there is a large population of the general public that has had the disease and may have some protection. So between the two of those, if maybe there's 10 to 20% have some protection from natural infection and they don't get sick as much. So you're talking about in the spring, something like that. I agree with Dr. Trotman. It's going to be a while before before we are going to be able to stop masking, to stop so, social distancing. And we're, we're, we're talking a lot about the healthcare workers now, but uh, I'm really excited when we're going to be able to start vaccinating the general public. Uh, and that's when we're going to really start seeing uh, the, the, the lowering of, of numbers of people with, with COVID over time. It won't be immediately, but it'll be over time. And every, you know, a more and more population of, of, of the Ozarks need to be vaccinated before we really start seeing a fall in the numbers of our, of our, of our cases. And Dr. Morton, do we know if this vaccine simply just protects you or does it keep you from spreading? Is this why we should continue to mask? Yeah, it, it, we don't typically study vaccines ability to cage the contagiousness, right? It, it is typically to prevent the illness. And this one specifically, back, this vaccine is going to hold basically that instruction manual to tell the cells how to fight the COVID-19 um, instead and keep you from getting sick. And the next time that you're exposed to that virus, you're going to fight it off faster and not get sick. And we think that if we've already covered that, then hopefully then we're not gonna have as large of a viral load to spread, but we can't say that for sure. That's again, something we'll have to study and that's why we have to continue to do those mitigation things with the masking and the good hand washing and keeping things clean and, and you know social distancing. I think that the general public wants everybody to kind of look into this crystal ball and say, here's when it's gonna be normal again. And that's just not possible right now. In fact, health director uh, Clay Goddard yesterday shared a careful answer to the question of when will things go back to normal? We're gonna uh, work with some of our other Metro uh, health departments and come up with some standards that we feel comfortable with. Uh, for us, I, I believe that the priority recommendation would be to open the economy up fully before we get rid of face masking. Uh, so uh, that's really kind of the principles that we're talking about initially. You know, the, the good news is we have a little bit of time to, to work through those metrics. Uh, and uh, but at some point soon, we'll be announcing what we are comfortable with making uh, as far as recommendations to council goes. And Dr. Morton, when I um, put on my Facebook page asking uh, viewers to send us questions about any concerns that they had, and one that kept popping up was how quickly the vaccines were developed and tested as well. How safe is this process? And are there any concerns about how quickly it was developed? I, I think that this has been the most transparent process in comparison to what we typically see, even when we had the H1N1 vaccine come out. Um, you know, they basically, uh, from the federal level, cut out that red tape and they still went through th the same exact process they go through for every vaccine, but they weren't they weren't stressed by the regulations. Um, not only that, the um, actual vaccine is different from the typical virus vaccine where we have either dead or active parts of the virus. This is something that was already something we had and we didn't have to grow that virus to produce the vaccine. So that helped us in our time as well. Dr. Morton, let me ask you one more question while we have you here on the broadcast. Uh, we've heard a lot yeah. of uh, healthcare experts talk about their concerns going into the Christmas holiday. What are your concerns, if you have any? Yeah, I, I feel like we are definitely and have been in this continued uptick. So it's really more important than anything that we just are very aware and doing all the things that we can do to keep us from spreading that, including, you know, not being in large gatherings, having big group things that will potentially spread. Um, you know, all the kids are coming home from school um, and may have, you know, illness and not know it and be asymptomatic. So we just need to continue to be um, 
safe and wear our masks and keep our distance and not have large gatherings and try to limit how much we're going out and about. Well, Dr. Morton, we have so appreciated your time and expertise and input here tonight. Dr. Casey Morton, the president of the Green County Medical Society and the pediatric medical director over at Jordan Valley Health. Thank you for your time and you be well. And before we go, one of our crews talked to people in the Ozarks about whether they would get the vaccine. Here's what they had to say. I would um, because I'm a science teacher, so I believe in vaccinations. I would take it because um, dying of a disease that's curable sounds really stupid. I think I would take it, but I don't want to take the first round. I want them to make sure everything is worked out before I would. I don't think I would take the vaccine because it's to me it seems that it's been um, rushed like this just started all in like February and March. So obviously a lot of opinions out there with regard to this issue and a lot still to be decided and and you know our health department Heather has has been very transparent and giving us updates on what's going on locally. Uh, we can tell you that the health department is going to be changing some of its own protocols in terms of reporting data. Of course, they have a dashboard where they talk about how many cases of COVID-19 we have locally every day, how many people are hospitalized. We did learn just the other day, though, the health department is going to change uh, how often it reports, uh, sadly, the death rate here locally, and they're going to do that once a week now on Wednesdays moving forward. And you did hear Dr. Morton mention that this process um, for the most part has been transparent. That means mm -hmm. that information is readily available for you to look at and decipher and uh, determine uh, the best outcome for you. So we want to encourage you to go on OzarksFirst.com, look through that data, look at that Missouri dashboard as well uh, to get more information and study up on this process as well. As far as doses here in Missouri, we know that we are allotted about 50,000 doses so far that could be distributed as early as next week, according to Dr. Randall Williams. Now that does mean about 50,000 people, not just doses. So that does not include the second dose, which Operation Warp Speed will be giving us. Exactly. And I want to mention, too, I spoke to an insurance expert here locally uh, for an in-depth interview last week that we're going to be airing here in the next few weeks. And he was telling me that uh, most insurance companies are going to be uh, willing to uh, pay for the vaccine. As you heard Dr. Williams say, it's going to be free. But I would venture to say a lot of those insurance companies, too, would be considering paying for those administrative fees because he was telling me in, the, in their estimation and their outlook, well, they would rather much rather pay those those vaccination fees than pay a hospital fee if you have to you know sadly get hospitalized yes. with COVID-19. There is so much information developing every day and we want to keep you informed about the COVID-19 vaccine so make sure you follow follow Color 10 on Facebook and Twitter for updates in your feed. You can stay up to date by downloading our Color 10 News app. We're always on OzarksFirst.com. This broadcast will also be posted as well on OzarksFirst.com. We want to thank you for joining us for delivering the dose here on Channel 10 and Ozarks Fox tonight. We will see you tonight at 10 for Color 10 News.